Hello, everyone. HCAM News Director Tom Nappy here. And joining us here on HCAM News Live, we have Hopkinton Center for the Arts co-director, Chris Waldman. Chris, how are you today? I am well. How are you, Tom? Fun to be here. Glad you uh, could talk to us today. And um, uh, we are doing great, keeping busy as always. Uh, and we are a little sad, though, because... After 15 years, you are leaving the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. Uh, you've been a big part of the HCA, which plays a huge role overall in the Hopkinton community. Uh, can you tell us about your time there at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts and what it was like just watching the HCA grow uh, over the years that you were there and evolve into a bigger space and continuously adding more programs uh, what's your time been there like? Oh, tremendous. <laughs> you know, when, um, when I was asked to join the, the Cultural Arts Alliance board by Dora Garabedian, um, that was the predecessor to HCA uh, that existed in the farmhouse since the 90s. And they told me about the dream of renovating this dilapidated barn on the property. And I thought that sounded really, really phenomenally exciting. And it's one of the reasons I joined the board, but I thought, wow, this, this is a stretch. This is gonna take, you know, at least an eon and a half uh, to raise the funds and get everybody on board to make this thing happen. But um, tremendously enough, so many pieces came together and coalesced uh, at just the right time um, so, uh, we joined forces with Enterstage Left, um, so they came to the farmhouse and they became the resident theater company, and, uh, Kelly and I thought this would be a really fabulous opportunity to really, um, bring all of the arts together, which was always the vision that we both had, and, um, you know, using the great synergy of both organizations really enable the whole thing to blossom. And it definitely did. And then maybe six months, a year later, uh, Chuck Joseph from the Hopkinton Community Endowment came to us and said that they were looking for a project to back and really sink their teeth into. And uh, did we want them to help us as a fundraising arm uh, with the project. And we said, uh, yeah. <laughs> so basically all three organizations worked really hard to raise the funds and uh, eventually complete the build out in 2015. Um, it became the HCA because we decided to rebrand the organization so that it reflected all of the different disciplines that we could now offer. So it's visual art, performing art, uh, music, dance, and film. And um, we just love it when, when those disciplines are even able to sort of interact with one another. And um, one of the things I, I love about working here is, you know, you walk into the entrance, you're surrounded by art in the gallery. I can hear a, uh, a dance class in the performance space. Down the hall, I might hear a private lesson class going on. Upstairs, I can hear a drum class con conducted for like infants. So there's always something going on and, and it's a really energetic environment throughout the building. Absolutely, whenever I walk in there, I hear the same thing. Lots of instruments, maybe some dancing going on. Uh, it's always a fun atmosphere. Uh, what's it been like working with your uh, fellow co-director, Kelly Grill, over the years? Uh, well, as you know, she's, she's quite a dynamo. Um, it's been a really great partnership because my background is in visual art and hers is in performing arts. And, um, you know, we have very different styles and personalities. And so it's just... I think created a situation where kind of both of our strengths have worked well to grow the organization. Um, and uh, she and, and the rest of our staff are just 
just phenomenal. You know, we, we're very small staffed. We only have three full-time people doing all of this stuff, but um, everyone is so dedicated and energized. Um, it's just sort of a miracle that they hold this gigantic organism together every day, but they do it um, with so much passion and heart. It's, it's really, really wonderful to be part of. And uh, speaking of uh, you and Kelly, you hosted uh, recently the virtual fundraiser gala, which was uh, live on HCAM. How did everything with that go? And uh, obviously it was a little bit of a different type of gala than we're used to on a yearly basis at the HCA, but it looked really cool on air and people seem to have a good time. How did it go? It went really, really well. Um, thank you to you guys, certainly. Uh, for for posting it and enabling it to go so smoothly, um, it, it really was remarkable how many people uh, were just so happy to be there and expressed what a fabulous time they had. You know, we we didn't quite know how this would go ahead of time, and um, I think that it went even better than we expected. It it not only went smoothly technically for the most part. Uh, but as I say, people had a great time. Yeah, it was fun seeing everyone uh, dancing too. I, I was watching it, uh, bits and pieces of it, especially when the uh, music was playing and uh, it was great seeing everybody dancing and having a good time. Uh, so could you recall uh, any of your favorite memories uh, during your time at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts? Uh, what What's some of the most... Uh, fondest times to you uh, during your tenure there? Um, well, let's see. They, you know, they go from sort of big moments to uh, those little tender moments that just have to do with one individual. Um, one thing that struck me uh, at the first gala, in fact, in 2015, was uh, that there we were standing on a cement floor in the performance space because it hadn't been completed yet. But in such a short period of time, this gorgeous space had been erected and um, we could just imagine what, what we would be able to do with it, you know, once we actually had a floor and lights and sound system and seats. Um, and that did, that did come to fruition. And so it was, it was just so thrilling to finally have it, this dream that had begun in, in fact, in the nineties, that was the dream of the original founders of the CAA was to uh, create a multidisciplinary art center that would be expanded. And um, as well as Interstage Left having huge aspirations of finding an, a real home and expanding their program. So that, that felt pretty remarkable. But aside from that, I think um, it's, it's just those moments when, when a student, um, particularly one who's, who's maybe had a hard time or struggling with something at home, um, comes here and suddenly sort of takes a deep breath and seems like they're home, they're comfortable. I mean, many people have expressed the fact that HCA feels like their second home. And um, the number of people I've seen just blossom and become more confident and mature um, and make new friends and um, particularly the young people sort of growing into these amazing human beings. Um, and I think it's because they found their voice and there was the support around them to um, that really nurtured them, that enabled them to really explore that and, you know, find, find themselves and discover their loves. Yeah. The uh, performances that I see from the HCA students never ceases to amaze me. Uh, you guys have just done a great job at molding it into this um, all inclusive arts center. You got a little bit yeah. of everything there. Uh, yeah. So, and I was just going to mention um, that reminded me too of, of one other student who had been coming here for years for uh, music lessons. 
And she told me that she had always wanted to paint, but she was told when she was a kid that she was terrible at it and why bother? And um, I said, well, that's ridiculous. Who told you that? <laughs> Forget that. Um, just come take a class, just try it. You know, you just need to learn some techniques. It isn't a thing that, you know, either quote, you have it or you don't. And so she took a class and within weeks, she, she was just beaming. She was so excited that she was able to do this. And she said, you know, after that one class, she gained so much confidence. She said she um, basically sort of restructured her business and uh, it changed her relationship with her husband and her friends. She just really blossomed because of this experience, you know, learning how to paint. And I think so many people have those kinds of transformations when they feel comfortable exploring uh, their creativity. And that's one of the great things about the services that you guys provide at the HCA is you might not have experience. You might not think you're good at something, but you can come try it and you can learn it and become better at it. And uh, with the great instructors you have there, most likely flourish if uh, you put your heart and soul into it. Uh, so what's next for you? What's next in the story of Chris Waldman? Oh, well, you know, I think, um, I think as for many people, um, COVID is, has given me pause and has really made me think about life and what I want to do with it. Um, to paraphrase uh, Mary Oliver, you know, what, what will I do with this one precious life? And um, thinking that now is the time to uh, step off and try a new adventure. And I don't know what that will look like at this point. Uh, that is part of the journey, but um, I'm, I'm sort of considering it as a, a mini sabbatical uh, to just uh, step back and reflect on things and sort of see what comes. And, and in addition, I do hope to get back to making some art myself and uh, I have recently started uh, volunteering at uh, Soup Kitchen. And so I do also feel a need to uh, do something hands-on right now to uh, help the people in our communities that need it. Well, Chris, uh, whatever you do next, I'm sure it will be great. Uh, congratulations on a tremendous career over at the uh, HCA, and we'll certainly miss you around the Center for the Arts, but we hope you'll stay in touch, and we wish you the very best of luck. Thank you very much.